in her first state of the state addressing a Democratic majority. Governor Gretchen Whitmer called for priorities Democrats have pushed for for years. But this time the governor says she hopes they'll be accomplished. Our political reporter Rachel Louise Just is in Lansing with a wrap up on tonight's historic speech. The governor set the scene for her second term tonight, focusing on wins from her first, but also looking forward, sharing a vision of economic growth and forward movement. In a very blue legislature, not just with the majority, but the colors on display. Michigan, the state of our state is strong and ready to go. The governor sharing a message touching on hope, giving her fifth state of the state the first of her new term, taking the chance to push for legislation previous Republican majorities have continually shot down, expanding protections for anyone based on sexual orientation or gender identity. Let's get it done. Repealing the dormant 1931 abortion ban. I want you and anyone who lives in a state that wants to control your body or deny your existence to know that Michigan has a place for you. And when it comes to gun violence, the time for only thoughts and prayers is over. The governor calling for universal background checks plus safe storage and red flag laws. If Florida and Indiana can get this done, we sure as heck can, right? As Democrats gave one standing ovation after another. <laughs> Republicans staying mostly disengaged with the governor, even on issues both sides support. I know we might have different perspectives here, but I sure hope we can all get around supporting four-year-olds across Michigan. Other top concerns from the governor, economic development and attracting young talent. For too long, we were fighting with one hand tied behind our back. And now, Michigan has got the upper hand. The governor introducing her new plan, lowering my costs. It comes in three parts, repealing the retirement tax, expanding the earned income tax credit, and pre-K for all. Whitmer not leaving the night without multiple references to the Lions. Or your grit hat. Including a video featuring the season. Tonight marks the first sign since the COVID-19 pandemic began that this was held in person. One thing we didn't see the governor hitting on tonight was right to work, something that she opposes. She's telling us today that the reason she didn't talk about that is because everyone already knows her stance on it. In Lansing, Rachel Louise Just. The Republican response to Governor Whitmer was given by Senate Minority Leader Eric Nesbitt. He gave his response from a grocery store where he highlighted inflation. He says Governor Whitmer has added to the problem. Governor Whitmer had multiple opportunities to provide you with real relief, to put more money, your money, back in your pocket. But she failed you by vetoing each proposal that was sent to her. She failed the new parents who needed a little extra help buying diapers and baby food. She failed the family already struggling to send their daughter off to college. She failed the retired couple who just wanted to buy Christmas presents for their grandkids. This is a fundamental difference between Republicans and Democrats. Nesbitt says Republicans are willing to reach across the aisle to work with Democratic lawmakers and the governor. He hopes Governor Whitmer will stand behind her words tonight and work with Republicans. Our crews also caught up with several other lawmakers from both sides of the aisle. We wanted their reaction to some of the governor's proposals. It was nice to hear a speech full of things that we can actually move on. I would really love for a lot of these initiatives, all of these initiatives, to be bipartisan, but it's good to know that if that isn't possible, we can move on them anyway. There's areas where we can find bipartisan compromise and work with the governor. I'm thinking about income tax relief and I'm looking at the earned income tax credit. I was encouraged to hear the governor supported the earned income tax credit. That's a House Republican bill. Lots of lawmakers and state leaders are also weighing in tonight, including Michigan Attorney General Dana Nessel. She issued the following statement in regards to Governor Whitmer's call for gun safety policies. Nessel said in part, quote, these policies are proven to stem gun violence and prevent unnecessary firearm related injuries and deaths. The public understands these common sense policies are long overdue and will go a long way towards creating safer communities. Dylan Morris, who survived the Oxford High School shooting, attended tonight's State of the State address. He issued a statement saying, in part, with 39 mass shootings in 2023 so far and five of them within the span of three days, no future without today, and I are eager to work with the legislature to enact safe storage laws, extreme risk protection orders, and the universal background checks. 
We need to quickly save lives. I talked to political analyst Paul Rizicki about Whitmer's address. He found one thing very interesting and surprising. Uh, I was watching who, who would stand up and applaud who did not. In most cases, it was the Democrats. But there was one exception. That was in the area of some of the tax policy and some of the economic issues. Early on, I saw at least uh, more than a handful of Republicans standing up. So, uh, and that was a kind of, that was kind of the, the lead paragraph of, of her speech. So she had a little bit of a bipartisan pitch at the beginning. If you missed the State of the State Address, you can watch it in its entirety right now at midmichigannow.com. We have the video and the story right on our homepage.